What exactly goes into making a realistic simulation game? We caught up with Sim Masters Dovetail Games to find out. At Logitech G, we love simulation games, and we've done plenty of videos on not just the best ones, but on the reasons that we just can't stop playing. To delve deeper into exactly what makes the best sims tick, though, we took a trip to Dovetail Games, the studio behind Fishing Sim World Pro Tour and Train Sim World 2020. First off, it's important to ask what the goal is when it comes to simulation games. Is it possible to be too realistic? It turns out that the answer is very much yes. At Dovetail Games here, we're all about the simulation. So our goal is to make fishing sim world as realistic as possible. Now, when it comes to things like how the fish behave, how the fish move, where you would find them in the water, what sort of baits they like, you know, how they feed and those sorts of things and how they fight when you get them on the line, we try and make that as realistic as we can. But when it comes to sort of more of the gameplay side of it, what we do is we focus on the fun aspects of fishing and don't include, you know, the things which I, I don't find, I think are as, are as fun. So that might be, you know, something fiddly like threading a little tiny uh, fishing line and trying to tie a knot with it. Getting your hook line stuck in a tree and then having to, you know, get, the, get it back out of the tree and losing equipment. So we try and focus on the fun aspects and, uh, you know, leave the sort of an annoying parts uh, to the side. On Train Sim World, it's all about realism too. But the team also has to break down what really matters when you climb into that driver's seat. So we always like to start from real, start from how things are in reality and then try and replicate that. And then what we really look at is what's important in the simulation and what's important to get it fun. So you get inside a train and you realise that they're like spaceship cockpits. There's hundreds of buttons and switches and dials. And you look on the back wall, there's hundreds of fused switches and all sorts of things. Are they all important? Actually, what do you need to deal with? And if that fuse breaks, maybe it completely takes the train out of service. Maybe that's not a good experience for somebody. So what we want to try and do is work out what, what buttons and switches are really core to the experience. What add a nice little bonus, which is really interesting so that they're an optional thing that if you want to take it a bit further, you can go a bit further, but then realize that actually a lot of the buttons and switches are either never used by the driver or they're only used by an engineering crew or they're used in really bad situations, in which case they're probably not important. So then we can work out actually, these are the kinds of switches and controls Controls which make it engaging and interesting. Get those as real as possible, um, but then not do all the stuff which just creates confusion and maybe even makes it to where it doesn't use stuff you will never use. And of course, it's not just the inside of the train that matters. There's a huge world out there that needs to feel real and alive too. So when we look at a new route, we do an awful lot of research here first. We'll use Google Earth, we'll use photographs, we'll, we'll do an awful lot of, uh, we'll see if we can find books, and we'll just gather everything, all the knowledge that we can about the route. We'll try and find technical drawings um, in terms of how the track schematics are and what the signaling looks like. Then we'll go out and visit the route and we'll take 10,000 photographs in that order. Strange photographs, the kinds of photographs that as a, as a visitor to the, as a tourist, you would never take straight down at the platform, straight up against a brick wall. Because as you travel along a route, let's say for example on some routes, there may be a, a brickworks nearby. And what you'll find is that the brickwork from the platforms will be different according to the, what's happening, what the materials are locally. So it's important we capture that difference. It's not just a station building, it's a station building made out of certain types of bricks. And so we try and capture that difference as you go down. So once you've got all the photographs, collating all those together, then the art team start working out what's important on the route, where are the really important scenery assets. Track laying team start building the track, and then it's just putting it all together and, and the team just working really hard to create the assets. When it comes to Fishing Sim World Pro Tour, on the other hand, how the water looks is only half the battle. There's an added, very living element hidden under the surface. Whether we're in the Peruvian rainforest or chilling with our rod in Austria, what it's like to actually fish there is key. So each location in the game is is very different. The challenges that uh, an angler faces when they fi fish one body of water compared to another body of water is going to be very different. So getting out to those locations in person, talking to people that are fishing them and fishing them ourselves is, is massively important in um, allowing us to understand the intricacies of, of those different venues and we have to make a list of what are the strongest elements that we want to try and bring over to the, to the gameplay from that environment 
and then we can you know, bring that information back and set about um, you know, creating that in the simulation. As angling pros will know, if you're heading out on a global fishing adventure, you need the gear to match. And that's something that the Dovetail team is very aware of. They use real products to deliver an authentic experience. We have a lot of real-world companies in the game that are, um, you know, are partners and manufacturers of baits. So I've been out to visit many of those and we actually sit with the, the guys that design what goes into making those baits. That might even be from before that particular bait or lure has come onto the market. Sometimes they might be looking to launch that new item in the game and in the real world at the same time. We speak a lot to the manufacturers about the specifics of the bait and then we create reference with regards to how the bait moves in the water or how it should be used and the different types of fish that would be attracted to that bait under different conditions. In our site here we have access to uh, uh, ponds of water that we can go out, you know, try different baits out, video them, and then we can pass that reference over to the, the art team and the engineers to try and make sure that the way that bait or lure um, acts in the water is as realistic as possible. Dovetail Games are also the developers behind the long-running train simulator series, but when it comes to Train Sim World, they decided to make some big changes. The Unreal Engine meant that for the first time, we could step out of the train and onto the platform. So getting out and walking around completely transforms the way that you experience the game. You're not the train. It's, it's a slightly strange concept, but in the Train Simulator 2020, the train is the character. In Train Sim World, you're the character, so you can get out, you can walk around. What that means is that train is now a vehicle that you can get in and drive. It suddenly feels big. It feels real, it feels like you're operating heavy machinery now. It means you can get out, walk down the platform, you can experience the world. So instead of just being a train stuck on the rails, you're now a person that can walk anywhere. So you can look in detail at all the platforms, you can walk over all the footbridges, you can really enjoy the scenery that's around. There's people who have literally walked up and down the route multiple times, you know, spending hours in one game session just walking along the routes and just enjoying the scenery. If all that open world potential makes you wish there were checklists and things to find as you explore, then your stuff hungry soul can be soothed here. We added collectibles to give people something to do so they can find a hundred different collectibles throughout the route, which enables them to maybe change and improve, transform the route a little bit, but also kind of how I've been here before because this poster is now placed. And for those of us who don't quite fancy the stress of making sure that all the commuters get to work on time and all that guilt if you don't, the first person mode means you can surrender control of the train entirely. Where previously the loco was really the, the main focus, now you can get out and you can enjoy. We model all the interiors of all of the coaches in great detail, so you can go and sit in the coach and let the computer drive the train. And some people don't want to learn to drive the trains, but they still want to enjoy the route because maybe they visited there or they want to visit there. So they'll go and sit on the co in the coaches and they'll look out the window and just enjoy the scenery. It makes it a nice passive game to enjoy as well. Splashing back to Fishing Sim World Pro Tour, and in terms of new levels of detail, perhaps some of the most impressive AI tech is hidden underwater where you can't see it. In a lake there could be anywhere between 15 to 100,000 fish that sort of exist in that lake. Now, obviously if we were to draw all of those at the same time, the consoles would fall over and, and they, won't, they wouldn't be happy. So what happens in the simulation layer is that those fish exist as nodes and they follow their own sort of patterns of behavior, searching for food and, and looking for um, either hiding spots or you know, cover in the environment. But we only actually draw them as a physical 3D model when the lure or bait is in, within proximity of them. So every time you play the game and you're driving around on the boat and you see those fish on the fish finder, those fish are actually there and are following their own sort of AI movements that sort of drive them in their migration around the lake looking for food sources. You're watching this on the Logitech G YouTube channel, so chances are that you love audio as much as we do. For Train Sim World 2020 then, Dovetail Games cultivated an audio library of genuine sounds. Plus, everything we hear is entirely unique to our experience thanks to what Dovetail calls its Simugraph physics tool. Wherever we can, we'll actually go out and visit the locomotives that we're trying to model and the wagons and the coaches with the help of the operators of the trains. 
we'll put microphones all over the trains, five or six microphones under the under the locos, inside the locos, in the cab, by the exhausts, wire them all in, and then we get the operators to drive the trains, and we'll capture all that audio from them throttling up and uh, taking throttle off, recording various horns, button clicks, switches, any sound that locomotive makes in all the different situations that it would make it, and that goes into a massive audio library. And then the audio team then cut and splice and edit all that audio and make it to where the game engine plays it all at the correct point. And because we've Simeograph technology that powers the internals of all the physics, we can take individual components of sounds and play them when the physics engine is telling them to play. So it's not just, I increased the throttle, therefore the engine sounded louder. It's sounding louder because the physics is saying the engine is working harder and doing more works. So a lot more precision in terms of how we can uh, assign that audio. So in train sim world, we can drive trains to a timetable, take in the scenery if we don't fancy clock watching, and even walk along the platforms and rails. But there are even more granular ways to experience life as a locomotive engineer. I think one of the features that is um, missed by a lot of people is, is the cold and dark starts. Cold and dark starts are where the train is completely dead. It's not running, it's been left overnight, maybe even for a week. It's sitting there with the lights off, the engine's off. And then you turn up and someone said to you, you need to move a train, or can you just move that to another siding? And so it's really going through that process of bringing a train to life, essentially, which is not just like in a car where you just click, turn the key, you press a button, but it's quite an involved process. Certainly for some of those trains, for more modern trains, it's easier for electric trains, but certainly for some of those trains, it's actually quite an involved process, and it's really good fun. But it goes even further. Feedback from simulation and real-life enthusiasts means that the initial release of these games is actually only the beginning. Community feedback is so essential to everything that we do. We're, we have a, a very busy forum and our social media is very active as well. We try and pay a lot of attention to all the feedback that we're getting in terms of what people want to see in terms of new content, what they thought about the content that we put out, what was the bits they liked, what was the bits they thought could be better, and then try and roll that feedback into what we're doing in the future, whether it's the routes that they want to see or whether it's the routes that other kinds of routes they want to see. We get a lot of requests that are actually lots of freight route requests, then maybe we can prioritise doing a freight route, for example. It turns out that anglers are just as communicative. It was only a matter of weeks after one initial release that a big Fishing Sim World community request was implemented. So when we first came out with Fishing Sim World Tour, um, we had uh, obviously we've got the bass boats in there. And on the front of the bass boat, you get a little uh, thing called a trolling motor. Now we had that in there as a physical model. It was, a, it was an asset that was built as part of the boat, but it wasn't functioning. One of the first things that the players asked for, was that they wanted to be able to use that, and they wanted that part of the boat, that small motor to be, to be functioning and, and working. So very soon after release, we, we, we did an update and we added it in, and it does this beautiful animation as it goes down, splashes into the water, and then you can drive your boat now using the quieter electric trolling motor, not the big noisy outboard, which um, obviously helps with not spooking the fish and, and things like that. So that was a behind the scenes look at how Dovetail Games craft their in-depth simulations. Let us know your favourite sims and why in the comments below, drop us a realistic like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to Logitech G for more deep dives just like this one. If you do already subscribe, ring that notification bell so that you know when our next video lands.